Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about how we run our household on these two units, our whole house. So we have, just to give a little bit of background, we have a 2200 square foot home and it's all electric and we are able to run it with these two units. So before I talk about that, I wanted to talk about two key points here. So these are, I guess it would be three key points, but these are the EG4 6500 EXs. They are 6,500 watt inverters, um, split phase. So um, each one of these is providing 6,500 watts, which is a total of 13,000 watts or 54 amps. So if somebody were to say, what can I run with these? The easy answer would be 13,000 watts or 54 amps. But the, the more complicated or longer answer is, you know, it's kind of, it depends on how much you're willing to um, work with those numbers in the house. So I have currently, I have a rack or a cabinet of EG4 rack batteries. So it's a full cabinet. So there's 600 or six batteries in there that makes 600 amp hours worth of batteries there. I also built my own here. So I have a cabinet over here of DIY batteries. So total, I'm just under 1200 amp hours of 48 volt batteries. So what I would like to go over with people is first, make sure whatever system you do pick out, if it's not going to be these, make sure it's scalable. So this is more of a, a video to encourage people that it can be done. So if you don't have the funds to get much started, you can continue to expand as long as you get the right equipment. So if you get these, you can expand to four eventually. Uh, if you're only going to get a few batteries, you could get, uh, three rack batteries, uh, you could build your own, but work your way into it as funds allow. And that's exactly what we did. Um, and same thing with solar. Uh, solar is much cheaper than battery storage. So I would go heavy on solar if it were up to me. And uh, you've got, a, a, and I'll go over it in just a little bit, but a higher daytime usage capability. And then the second thing I wanted to cover before I talk about how we dance around our loads is um, this is approachable, right? It, it, it may seem kind of intimidating. I have the cabinet open right now. And you see, if you're new to solar and you see a bunch of wires strewn everywhere, you're, you're kind of worried. But it's not plug and play, but it is not that difficult. Uh, there's a lot of things you can look on the solar forum and look on... Uh, you know, the setup for the particular inverter you were wanting to try, or uh, you can read about, you know, read the manual before you even invest in the inverter and see how complicated it looks, but it is not that bad. Uh, you've got usually an inlet and an outlet from the house. Uh, so the house power going into the inverter for bypass with most inverters of the all-in-ones. And you've got an outlet going to the house to a critical loads panel. Um, You've got battery and you've got solar going into it. So, you know, all these wires have a place. So I would say, take your time. Don't be intimidated by it. There's a lot of people wanting to get into solar now, but don't rush, you know, take your time and, and think through it. So how we manage to run our house on this. Um, so it's all about, it, well, you've got your basic loads that are always going to be there. So we've got two fridges and a freezer. And those are always going to be cycling on and off. We also have seasonal things. Um, we have a wood stove for heat. Um, but we have a space heater we run in the uh, greenhouse pretty often. My daughters have a chick business. So we, <laughs> we have uh, incubators running on and off. We have heat lamps for the chicks. So there's a lot of different loads that dance up and down periodically. But we want to, we really try to focus on the heavier loads. Uh, in our case, we have a water well, so that can be a heavy surge when it starts. Uh, it's a deep well, but uh, after it's running, it's not too bad. Really, the key players for us are the oven, the dryer, and the hot water heater. So what we did to eliminate some of the hot water heater part of it uh, is get a Ream hybrid hot water heater. And I actually put it in our crawl space. I might do a video on that. <laughs> I had to shoehorn it in there because it's... It's full height, but obviously my crawl space under my house is not full height. So I've got a little well in there for it. It's 
pretty interesting and it keeps the under of the house really dry because it's a uh, heat pump. But yeah, that made a big difference. So a typical 50 gallon electric hot water heater pulls 4,500 watts, but with that hybrid in hybrid mode, it's only pulling around 700 watts, something like that. So 350 watts from each of the inverters. Definitely a lot more manageable if you can get one of those. Because uh, the oven and the dryer are major players, but they do, there is a little bit of leeway there in the sense that they cycle on and off. So the oven, after it heats up to its desired temperature, it'll click on and off. It's certainly pulling a lot of wattage, uh, and so is the dryer. It'll click on and off. But the hot water heater is constant. Once it starts, it is not going to stop until it's completely uh, warm. So with those major players, it's something to uh, manage. You have to figure out what loads we're going to use and when. Uh, if, so if, if we know there's going to be a lot of, and that's what I wanted to cover here, if, there, if we know there's going to be a lot of solar, and we look at the forecast and we see there's plenty of sunshine on this day or that day, that will be the day that my wife will bake. So she'll bake bread or she bakes all kinds of things. So we'll try to focus more on those days um, for a he heavy energy usage during the day. She's a stay at home mom and I'm home often with her. And that, that helps because these units are capable of using power directly from the sun to your loads without hardly touching the batteries. They'll use them to balance every now and then or to get the load started. But essentially, if you've got a, a good amount of solar coming in, they're going to use it directly, which is pretty interesting. It's kind of satisfying if you have a monitoring app or if you look here on the inverters and see, uh, you know, you've got the, the oven running, you've got the well going, or maybe you've got the dryer at the same time, and you can see that they are still charging it means you're making uh, the power for all those loads and then just a little bit. Um, so that's, that's pretty satisfying there, knowing everything's going directly and being efficient. Um, so that's, that's how we try to manage things. Uh, it's, it's a learning curve, though. You really have to figure out you know, where that ceiling is, and you, and you kind of get used to it. Um, I wanted, that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video, is to encourage people that this can be done on a budget. Um, the batteries can be in increased incrementally. Uh, the inverters, really, that's the one thing you want to kind of invest in from the start, kind of build the system around that, around that wattage. Um, but they can be added on to as well. So if you needed the extra two, you can do that also. But I wanted to encourage those people that want to get, in, want to get into this and not only they're intimidated by the wiring, like I mentioned, but they're intimidated by the funds. And it is, you know, there is money involved, but it may not be as much as you're thinking. So study up on it. Um, look at uh, the different websites. I've got some links down below to different sites. There's a link for a bundle with these. They actually, uh, back when I first started, they didn't have these bundles. Uh, so it was a little harder to kind of go piecemeal and look at all the different parts. But they have nice bundles out now that uh, are slightly cheaper than buying things separate usually and much more convenient. But yeah, study up on it, guys. Look on the forums and, and do some research. And you can accomplish a lot with these little, just these two little inverters here. They're, uh, they're workhorses. So an all-electric home can, uh, can survive. <laughs> On, on just two of these. We are evidence of that. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, guys. So I got to the editing portion of my uh, work here on this video, and I remembered that I almost forgot the air conditioning portion. So I have two central air units. So I, I put a micro air easy start on both of them. I've got a video on that. Uh, but that cut down on the started, the starting wattage, uh, the amperage pool. Uh, when they start that surge uh, so that really helped and then the units themselves are sort of small so they're only a two ton and a two and a half ton when they're running they're around one is around 11 or 1200 watts and the other is 1300 watts so it's not a huge burden on these units but that is a consideration also
if people are going to have to use mini splits or window units, or if they are going to try to run their central air units like us, um, you know, how they can manage their other loads with that. Did not want to forget that portion of it.